Are you tired of frizzy hair every time you dry your hair? Are you stuck in a never ending cycle of trial and error when it comes to drying your curly hair? Today I'm here to share some game changing tips to help you dry your hair with surprising ways to minimize frizz. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, founder of Honest Liz, specializing in dry curly cuts, styling and blogging about curly hair care. Before we get into the techniques, I want you to hit that like button because once you do, YouTube algorithm will work in a way to show you more videos in this category. And also make sure to subscribe to be notified of my upcoming videos. Let's talk about the two main techniques of drying curly hair, air drying and diffusing. Air drying is simply letting your hair dry naturally and diffusing is using tools and accessories that help you speed up your drying time. In this video, we will explore both the disadvantages and advantages of both these techniques. I will also walk you through my personal routine for drying my curly hair and to show you that every curly girl has a unique drying process. I will also give you some examples from popular bloggers and their drying techniques to compare. And remember, there are no rules here. Treat all these things as options and do what you can, whatever you like for your hair, because ultimately the way you dry your hair depends on your personal preferences and what is available to you. Let's first talk about air drying. While it may take a bit longer than any other processes, air drying can actually be beneficial for textures like thick coarse hair like mine or color treated hair or like extremely bleached hair that really wants moisture. Here's a fun fact. Since water adds moisture, when you air dry, you are allowing water to continuously moisturize your hair. So air drying is actually a method to add more moisture to your hair. Therefore, if your hair does not need moisture or lots of moisture, then maybe air drying is causing frizz for you because too much moisture also causes frizz. Once you've styled your hair, the steps you take to dry your curls, the drying process has a great impact on the final outcome. That is in plain English. The way you dry your hair and the steps you take, the little things that you do in your drying process has a great impact on your results. So to achieve smoother, more frizz-free curls during your drying process, consider trying these steps. If air drying takes too long for you, especially after styling your hair, then consider this technique called plopping. You can plop your hair into a microfiber towel like this. My girlfriend Victoria, one of the sweetest curly hair bloggers that I know and she has kind of similar texture like mine, she does that. She plops her hair before she adds her hair gel and then doing that helps her dry her hair like within 10 minutes. No, no, she doesn't air dry but we'll talk about what she does in a minute. The point is, when you plop your hair in a towel like that, it absorbs all the excess water. So therefore, if you air dry after that, then it can speed up your drying time. If you don't have time to plop like this, or plopping this way gives you like scalp trouble buildup or like dandruff or like itching or scalp problems basically, <laughs> then don't plop. You could use the same microfiber towel to micro plop. This technique involves gently squeezing out the excess water with the towel so that the excess water is out and the air drying process is faster than usual. Here are some of my pro tips. To speed up your drying time, try styling your hair on damp hair. Don't style your hair on soaking wet hair. So that way, the water weight is reduced immediately. Try different plopping methods. Watch my video here about plopping. I link it in the description for you. And remember, allow your hair to air dry for at least 10 to 15 minutes before you get into a diffusing tool. If you're air drying, you could also lie down at the edge of your bed and change positions every few minutes so that air goes into your hair. 
and that way you'll get more volume just just think about it if you're air drying in one position it will dry in that position so if you want like bouncy curls with lots of volume then you have to dry it in such a way also plus doing this also speeds up the drying time for your scalp you can continue to air dry till you feel a little bit of a cast when when hair starts feeling crunchy that's your cue to start diffusing with tools or you can just continue air drying if that's what you want and this is really important even if you're air drying and especially if you're air drying in the sun then remember to use a heat protection spray to protect your hair from the uv rays or from the heat of just basically just damage in the air if you want more volume at the roots then try root clipping technique to lift up your roots while it's drying here's what i like to do i like air drying my hair when i'm product free yeah you heard it right that means i would shampoo and condition my hair and not style my hair and that's the hair that i would air dry air drying your hair when it's product free can be a refreshing change for you to notice your natural curl pattern it's also a healthier way because it gets less heat from any of the tools it gets a break from the normal things that you're used to doing it really allows you to see and feel how your natural hair is and how far you've come from your beginning of the journey by giving your hair a break from styling and air drying naturally it gives you a moment to assess your hair's health condition and also reduce the need of styling products air drying while you're product free once or twice a month not only gives you a break it also saves you time and minimizes any hair damage speaking of damage from drying your hair a recent study shows that air drying your hair actually is more damaging than using a tool from a distance let me explain when you air dry your hair your hair is swollen up as long as it's wet and if it's wet for a really long time that can force the inside the interior of your hair to cause damage while at the same time if you use tools and high heat and smoke is coming out you know those kind of drying techniques that can damage the outer layer of your hair therefore the study concludes that air drying naturally is more damaging to your hair than drying your hair with a tool from a distance so let's talk about that so if you find yourself lacking time or you don't have a ceiling fan to like lie under so that you can air dry your hair under the fan if you have any of these limitations and or if you just want boing curls that spring just like instagram curls yeah you need a diffuser all those curls that you see on instagram are most likely from diffusing now diffusing can be a clever tool to help you not only speed up drying time but also enhance your natural curl pattern but it's not as simple as blasting hot air into your hair Many curly girls are actually afraid to try a tool like a dryer diffuser attachment because maybe they think it's expensive or maybe they think it will cause damage or it will or maybe you did try it and then it caused so much frizz you you think to yourself oh I might as well just but no diffusing properly using the proper tools can actually help you speed up drying time and also get you a better curl pattern happening than naturally air drying and getting like limpy stretched out hair to overcome this fear that you have start by diffusing your hair at a low speed and low heat and move around your hair fast like don't spend too much time in one area just keep moving around this will distribute the heat evenly and help you to get frizz free results the key here is to diffuse or use your dryer on low heat and low speed most people also use a diffuser with high speed but on cold air you can do that but it might take longer and then then you think to yourself you might as well air dry 
So diffuse with low heat and low speed. To diffuse with minimal frizz, follow these steps. You can begin the diffusing process by hovering the diffuser around your hair. This tip was popularized by the popular curly hair stylist Mains by Mel. She recommends that you hover diffuse at high speed and high heat as long as you don't touch your hair. You're just hovering around and this method can give you a lot of definition but not necessarily the volume and that is why this other blogger Dierde, she refuses to hover diffuse. She, she prefers to diffuse directly to get more volume. Dierde goes right into her drying process by cupping her curls into the diffuser and going all the way with it. Many girls believe that diffusing is actually time consuming than air drying but the opposite is true. My friend Victoria, she plops her head in, in the towel and then takes it out, applies gel and then gets into direct diffusing and finishes her drying process within 10 minutes. And so does Rocio. She is one of the famous Spanish curly hair bloggers and she does the same diffusing method. Concern about using your hands and diffusing and spending too much time diffusing going up and down this way? Then don't worry, there is a hands-free method to diffuse also. Give hands-free diffusing a try with a hooded dryer attachment like this. Not only does a hands-free diffusing with a diffuser attachment like this save you time, but it also allows you to multitask while you dry your hair. With this innovative approach, you can go about your morning routine or you can have a cup of tea. So I was saying, this method is not only convenient, but it also allows you to multitask while your hair dries effortlessly. You can savor a cup of tea or you can catch up on your 10 pages a day routine or you can check your emails. You can do anything and let your scalp dry within 10 minutes. Depending on what your hair texture is, how long your hair is or how thick your hair is, the time of your hair drying in this kind of attachment can vary. For example, for me, I need my hair to be inside this attachment at least for 20 minutes to dry completely. But at the same time, I have my children, they all have like baby fine hair and their hair dries like within minutes. So say goodbye to arm fatigue and hello to a more convenient option with hands-free diffusing. Okay, I've been touching this so much, it's frizzing, so I'm just going to like... I like to style my hair on really wet hair, okay, like soaking wet hair. And then I plop my hair into a wet plop, that's a plastic shower cap. And that's only for five minutes. And after that, if it's still dripping, then I like to plop in a turban towel for five minutes again. And by this time, my hair is like nice and ready to start the drying process. So then I immediately get into the hooded dryer and I use a hooded dryer for about 10 minutes. Sometimes I go all the way and just use a hooded dryer because you know, there are days when I don't want to do this. I can just do the dryer and just relax or take a nap. But there are other days, you know, like for example, I should have done this <laughs> in, you know, before I started filming this and I would have got like better curls. That's when, but on the days when I want better looking curls, I would diffuse in the hooded dryer for 10 minutes, take it out and then diffuse like manually, direct diffusing with a diffuser attachment like this. All in all, whatever hybrid combination that I do with my hair, with these drying techniques, I make sure that my hair is dry within 20 minutes. I do not like to have wet hair or wet scalp for more than that, it really irritates me. <sighs> I don't know about you. So that's why I prefer to air dry my hair when I have no product in my hair. It dries really fast within like 10 minutes also. I always use low heat and low speed when the diffuser is touching my hair and when the dryer is attached to the diffuser attachment 
then I always use the high speed and low heat settings. You can adjust the settings based on your preference. Remember, direct diffusing can help you with tighter curl pattern. So if you have wavy hair or any or hair like mine that can have looser texture as it grows longer and you want tighter, more springy curls, then you want to direct diffuse. But if you already have tighter springy curls, then don't do this. You can hover diffuse so that you get the definition without more shrinkage. So when I say that you can diffuse on low speed and low heat, the low heat actually can affect your elasticity of your hair. Think of it like how heat is used while blow drying. You use it on high heat and then hair becomes straight because you're manipulating it that way. So now we're just using that to our advantage and manipulating it this way. So it gives you better curls. Either way, remember to use a heat protection spray, whether you use a diffuser or if you air dry to prevent overheating or getting any heat damage from these tools or the environment you are in. With a little practice and the right technique, diffusing can be a clever tool in your curly hair routine. So whether you are a diffusing diva or a air drying aficionado, remember to do what is best for your curls. Try the techniques to meet the hair goals that you have. And if you're ready to dive deeper into curly hair care, then enroll for my curly hair course. It's everything you need to improve your curly hair routine. I hope you found this really useful. Let me know what techniques you're going to try or if you've already tried something and it's helped you or not. Either way, I would love to know. I'll see you in the next video.